Welcome back, everybody. You got Will and I, man, here from the Block Runner Metazone, Rovi and M Scribe, and today we got some UNAT art to explain. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you're not ready for this, right? I mean, I'm I'm pretty ready. I think at this point. No, you're not, dude. <laughs> I'm not. I'm about to blow your mind here, dude. Actually, you know, you're right. I was totally unready. Yeah. But, uh, you're like, Will, how do we <laughs> how do we do art? I was like, dude, we've been doing art. Yeah. And but I'll show you how we do it. Technically, well, that's, uh, what I'm doing is I'm voicing the consciousness of like every other artist out there. Yeah. Catching wind. <laughs> there's a new methodology in like generating art on chain and such. It's specifically to Bitcoin pretty soon coming to a chain near you. Yeah. Right. This is called DMT, digital matter theory. Right. And so there's a multiple applications here. You can generate Fungible tokens. Fungible tokens, but through that same deployment mechanism can be generated non-fungibility, mm -hmm. right? The same thing that has introduced like collectible digital assets in, in Web3, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it is different. It's a whole new like uh, token genesis mechanism where you have like two assets that are completely separate use cases, but they could still intertwine and such. That's yeah. what's happening, right? Yeah, so so essentially with every DMT deployment, you're deploying two assets, right? A non-fungible mm -hmm. asset and a fungible asset. Correct. And But both of those assets are based off of the Bitcoin block data. Making them non-arbitrary. Making them non-arbitrary, making them interesting. <laughs> That's right. So so we heard. <laughs> <laughs> people seem pretty interested. Yeah. So we're assuming there's a lot of people out there, you know, scratching their heads. Yeah. It's like, I see the Nat Cats. I see the Nat dogs and I see like pretty soon all these other like art projects deploying yeah. under this like new umbrella ecosystem. So it's like, how do I, yeah. in my many years of art, artistic creativity and experience participate? Correct. Good question. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So we have and, a, and so you had this, your own question, right? So yeah. how do we do that? Right. Yeah. And then you came, you came over and you're like, well, how do we do this? <laughs> yeah, I was like, what are you doing? How, dude? How did we do this? <laughs> right, right, right. All right. So, all right, so let me give you the, the short history, right? Yeah. We launched DMT, focus on fungibility, uh, and we're like, hey, Benny, right? We got this, like, aspect of it that that's focused on non-fungibility. Can we make a few updates here, here and there? It's true. It's like, yeah. Got it. So then we were working on this, like, this update to this Gitbook. All of a sudden, NatCats comes out. It was like, hey, you know what? I have some art that's based off the mints of a DMT token, and it's based off block data. Yeah. And all of a sudden, this guy front runs our update to the Gitbook. He does. And uh, and then and then I was like, okay, you did it, dude. You figured it out, right? Yeah. And I was like, okay, let's let's help this guy put everything on chain. Mm -hmm. And all you got to do is make this update. So what are the updates? So essentially, what happened here is NatCats launched a token, a DMT token, without the art. Yeah. It was artless. Yeah. Right. Which you could see on the NATs page. Like. Yeah. Right which there. which we'll we'll show you here. So now go so. Walk, let's, let's walk together on okay. this, on this journey, dude. All right. Hold my hand tight, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, don't want to <laughs> slip away here. <laughs> let's, let's get started with step one. All right. Step one is go to Amscribe and then click on Nats, right? Yeah. And so this is how you kind of like break this down on chain. So find NatCats. It's the fourth one here. It has the fourth most held token in 600. And click on deployment ID. When you click on this, it'll take you to ordinals.com. And it'll take you to the deployment of the inscription. Mm -hmm. And that's what this looks like. So it's a simple JSON um, structure. If uh, you guys, this is the first time you see JSON, right? Because you're new to this art thing on Bitcoin. You're going to see a lot of this. Yeah. All right. So get used to this. All you got to do is just read each line. Tap, DMT, deploy. And there's this thing called an inscription ID. And then there's the ticker NAT. So this is our deployment. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're actually going like back in time, right? Yeah, so so because you skip, already did all this. Yeah, skip the Nat Cats, right? We're going to Nat first, yeah. right? Because there's there's a story to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so we're looking at the NAT ticker, right? And it's like, okay, it's simple. We deployed a token. That's how you, how it's done. But the story doesn't. It begins here, right? Mm -hmm. So when we deployed this token, it was just fungible, and then we added the art to it. So how do we do that, right? So click on. Um, the uh, deployment ID here, and then scroll down, and there's a link called Sat. So this is the 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 Satoshi where this inscription exists on. So go ahead and click on it, and then you'll see kind of like this list of sort of the attributes of the Satoshi, the degree, percentile. But down here are the actual inscriptions on top of the Satoshi, and so what you're looking at here are three 
reinscriptions yeah. of the same deployment. Mm-hmm. So, so Will, why three? What? Take three every time you want to do this? Right, or what? absolutely not. Okay. Right, so what happened is I made some mistakes. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. Shame see, on you, dude. Yeah, so you can see here, and I, I'm showing the mistakes because... You're human. I'm human, right? That's, <laughs> you know, that's debatable, but... Oh, okay. Right. Whoa, well, <laughs> all right. But uh, but what you're looking at here is some <laughs> some mistakes I did. So on this Jason, I forgot a comma right after this n. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So this Jason was no longer valid. Yeah. So it's like, oh shit, I messed up. Did, did I screw up the whole thing? It's like, no, I just reinscribed it. Yeah. Right. So now it's correct, but this inscription ID ended up not working because we messed up on the script or blah 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 or whatever. Yeah. So then I redeployed it again with the correct inscription ID. So let's click on this one. So this is the one that is referencing actual art. So it's like, okay, now you have the same inscription, the same deployment, same everything, except with an added line. This did not exist before in our first uh, deployment, right? This ID. So it's like, okay, now I have this ID. What the hell? What, what did you do with this? Yeah. All right. So now let's go to Ordi scan. And let me copy this inscription ID and then paste it on Ordi scan. And you'll see what this is pointing to, right? So now you're looking at this huge text of code. Mm-hmm. It's like, so if, if you're an art guy, and you, you haven't dealt with code. Well, this is the open source place to start with code. Yeah. Right. So this is what we're, how we're able to generate art based off of blockchain data. Okay. So in this code, if you do control command F or control F and you put in block, there's uh, these references to the um, um, input input value block number. So this code is saying to generate this piece of art, give me a block number. And so if you go to any of the mints of this inscription, the mint has the block number inside the inscription. Yeah. So what, what's happening here is that that mint is saying, okay, this mint has a block number. I In this mint, there's a deployment ID that points back to this deployment. Oh, this deployment has another inscription ID that references this script. I'm gonna take this script, I'm gonna take your mint, I'm gonna inject this script, or I'm gonna inject this uh, block number into this script, and I'm gonna generate a piece of art. Yeah. And so what does this art look like? Well, let's go back to kind of the marketplace here and just give you an example. Of what this looks like. Um, give me a second here. And uh, so we're going to go to the marketplace on uh, Mscribe and we're going to hit uh, Unat. And then that's what the DMT art looks like. Mm. Just, uh, just a pinwheel with different colors. Okay. And but so the, the color assignment and everything is like. It's based off this script. Right. Here. So it's generatively like it being processed and rendered. Yeah. Based on uh, these values, I guess, and stuff. Yeah. It's, so this, as of right now, you know, most of these collections are probably going to be referencing some sort of like, you know, the block number, mm-hmm. but this, that's not to say like, that's the only data component that can be leveraged in like this yeah. asset generation standard. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so block number right now is kind of like the simplest to understand. Yeah. DMT used the block number, uh, NatCast used the block number, mm-hmm. but you can use any block data. Yeah. Right. Correct. And so w- what happens is when rendering the script asks for block height. Another script might ask for Merkle tree. Uh, or a different script might ask for uh, block um, transaction count, right? And so those are the fields from Bitcoin that gets injected into the script. The script takes those fields and generates a piece of art. It could be a rat. It could be a cat. It could be anything. Okay. So uh, so the NAT version of this, so there's a discrepancy or a difference between those two assets you just had on your yes. screen. Uh, so the one is like uh, w- uses more something called recursion, recursion, right? Which is if you haven't heard that, that's a real big scary word. Yeah, it was for me <laughs> the first time I heard it. It's like what? What do you mean recursive inscriptions? Yeah, that is something. Um, I think Danny Yang, founder of Onchain Monkeys, yep. like, largely demonstrated like with his OMC collection. Like like this is how you use recursive. Um, technology essentially to to bring like a higher fidelity grade of art into the ordinal space and reducing costs and all, all these different yeah. benefits so i would definitely recommend researching recursive inscriptions yeah before diving deep into like this part of like how do i actually assemble the right script uh for dmt units yeah, so, using recursion. So, so think of uh think of your art let's say a character like a like a crypto punk um 
the uh, the art has like different attributes, like a mustache or a visor or a hat or whatever. Yeah. And recursion takes those pieces and inscribes those pieces specifically into Bitcoin by itself. Correct. And each inscription is therefore a lot cheaper because you're only inscribing a little piece of the art. Correct. And recursion takes all those pieces and renders them together. Exactly. And that's what you have here, right? So how does that look like technically in code? Well, it looks like forward slash content forward slash inscription ID. So let's take this as an example and let's look at what this looks like on chain, right? So let's go to um, already scan again and copy and paste that inscription ID here. And this, sorry. And it looks like a red dot. Why, why a red dot? Well, that red dot is rendered in real time and it's placed here. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So that code d does all that essentially. Yeah. Just, um, it, 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 it renders it, it puts it at the right location, X, Y, Z location on the, on the canvas here. Yeah. And the same thing happens with these NatCats. Yeah. But, but NatCats does it a little bit differently. Yeah. And that's, that's what's cool about this. You can do it in different ways. All right. So now let's look at NatCats. How, how are they different than this, this pinwheel here? All right. So now let's go back and let's do the same exercise again. We click on uh, the deployment of NatCats. And uh, let's click on that. So here's the deployment of NatCats, right? There it is. Ticker NatCats data type hex, right? So scroll down, hit the SAT uh, link here. And then you'll see here, there was a single reinscription. Mm. Why is there a single one? Because he didn't make any mistakes. That's right. I was the one who made the mistakes to like getting this done right. All right, we spent the whole weekend doing this. Mm -hmm. The whole weekend. Yeah. And uh, so I made the mistakes, and then I was like, hey, hey, guy, this is how you do it. Yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah. take your script. We, we made like a small edit to that script to make everything work. But take your script, put it on, on chain, just inscribe it. And then once it's on chain, inscribe it with this new line, this new ID, with, the, um, with a pointer to that script. Mm -hmm. Right. So now let's look up that pointer. Go back to already scan again. All the links will be in the description. That way you guys can follow along. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's take a look at that script. So his script is at least four times longer than ours. <laughs> I wonder why, dude. Four times, at least four times. Like yeah. this was an extremely long script. Yeah. But if you're used to writing scripts, like this is not a big deal. And this is like, in your perspective, this is nothing, right? Yeah. Uh, but what they did different is they didn't use recursive inscriptions. They use like actual code to render the cats here mm -hmm. right so this is like an xyz location like a purple like it, it is rendered in real so this has like infinite resolution right yeah. so to speak this does not have infinite resolution this has a limited resolution okay okay so now we're looking at the script to generate these uh nat cats so what's the big deal here the script is on chain mm. why why does that matter that means anybody can use this script, copy and paste it, edit it, make it look like anything, like nat dogs or anything. But wouldn't you need to? So, what's the limitations of of creating an art collection with just code alone and not like? Oh, yeah, you know, that's a great question. Yeah, just right. just just in case you didn't know. So, <laughs> so there's a couple of ways you're sort of limited, right? There's, but you might be someone who knows a lot about scripts may not be as limited. Okay. With, to someone who doesn't know enough, right? Gotcha. So in this case, right, you have simple shapes, right? Yeah. Triangles and squares. And rectangles. And rectangles. And, and that's about it. And like, a, I so like a curved shape, right? Okay. So all this is like rendered in code because these are like simple shapes. But I believe if you do this in SVG, you can have more complexity. Okay. And, and, and still be rendered in real time. Right. Like infinite resolution. Right on, dude. So that, that's the kind of like... The task at hand for anybody who's kind of like looking at this and wants to dabble and experiment is, yeah, yeah, I guess discover these new complexity models so that you, again can exist on chain and be kind of create like a collective library. How do we, you know, yeah, um, you know, render this protocol and associate like different, you know, generative methods, yeah, to it. Yeah. So, so the the grand takeaway here is we have several ways to do art. Right, is using scripts. The way that we were able to do art post deployment is through a re inscription. Yeah. Right. 
Um, and so as soon as we release this Gitbook update, you don't have to reinscribe. You can just deploy it with the correct ID as correct. long assuming, yeah, assuming that you've, you're finished with your script, mm -hmm. right? If you're not finished, you can just deploy the, uh, the token, right? Like Nat cats. A lot of these, yeah, these Nat frogs, Nat yeah. rats and stuff. These are, they're like the impending, like, yeah. uh, art unveils essentially. They're essentially, yeah, correct. They're essentially deployments without this ID uh, line. Correct. Which could be a strategy. You could be like, hey, I got this uh, This token. It's called Nat Trash. Okay. Right? And uh, and the art will be revealed sometime soon. Yeah. And then all they do is reinscribe it. They point to the right art, and boom, your Nat Trash looks like actual trash. Very nice. Can't right. wait for that one to drop. <laughs> Who doesn't <laughs> want to uh, own some Nat Trash? Right. But uh, so, okay, so that, that kind of explains how do I actually, like, assemble these things through scripting essentially yeah. now how do i actually okay uh, leverage like these the non-arbitrary data components right? all right yes okay so now going back to the scripts here so clearly you can get as complex as you want right yeah so the only complexity here is uh the nat cats guy did cats and he requested um i think it was also block in in uh in the script here it says input, yeah, input value block number, right? He could have said input value uh, Merkle tree or input mm. value transaction count. Um, and so all this information can be gathered from a block number because the block number is unique, right? But that block number represents block data. Mm -hmm. And so in this script, if you need block data, let's say like a nonce value or some sort of value in the block data, you can request it in your script and then as long as it follows a standard, right? We have yeah. to do this in a standard way, mm. right? So you can essentially request it. It's like, I need this other value that is not the block height in order to generate my art. Okay, so I, I could do that and I can create like uh, different permutations per block. Yeah. Right, so now how do I, I, I you know, I, I'm a PFP artist. I want a collection around 10,000, mm -hmm. maybe 20,000 max. Like, yeah. so how do I like engineer, I guess like, uh, a sensible connection to a pattern that exists, right? Oh, and that's part of the framework. Yeah, is what I'm alluding to. Yeah, right? correct. These things are called elements. These referenceable, ref, referable, referenceable, referenceable. You could reference an element yeah. <laughs> essentially, and each one is is a a package of information itself that that basically signals to the indexer like a query. It's like how many times does this, this pattern occur, or does it occur or not within a block? Yeah, and this conversation assumes that you know the basis of digital matter theory and the deployment process and yeah. you know all that stuff, right? We're only strictly talking about how to do art based on DMT, mm -hmm. right? If you don't know what DMT is, you're gonna have to go back and, and learn a little bit more about what this is. Yeah. Uh, but this is specifically in the conversation of like understanding DMT already, how do I do art now? Okay. Right. Um, and so if you wanted to select a specific supply, then you have to pick an element that has that supply, uh, that pattern exists on, on Bitcoin with that supply, like 8,064. Correct. Right. These are non-arbitrary values, right? Yeah. So and that's part of the deploy, uh, deployment process. Correct. Correct. Is, is again, assigning that element. So yeah, that's it. So there's just a uh, multiple steps to this, but definitely, uh, reference the Git book. Uh, you know, we have a Discord channel like dedicated, yeah, on Mscribe where we talk about all these things. Definitely, we're getting a, a pretty large influx of interest. Yeah. So, so what does this mean? It's like, why do it this way? Because ultimately, the min inscription is as cheap as it gets. It's just text, right? It's not this complex art, right? You don't have to. Uh, the weight of the inscription matters, right? If your inscription is this like art, it's going to be very expensive to mint. Right. Mm -hmm. It is it is a non starter. So mm -hmm. instead, if it was just text, it's very cheap to mint. Yeah. Right. Then on top of that, the text only includes block data or block height, I should say. And that block height um, is is specific to block height data. And so if your script is referencing block height or some other data on Bitcoin, well, you can have marketplaces such as Mscribe feed that script the correct data you're requesting. Right, because this is all on chain, right? This data isn't just like manifest out of thin air, mm -hmm. right? It's there and it's verifiable and, and it's it's as hard data as any data that we have on earth, right? So if you're requesting a nonce field, 
from block height number one, mm -hmm. that nonce field can be grabbed from the Bitcoin core. Yeah. Right. And so you just feed that data and then you have your art. So all this is just to say is that we're creating this framework so that people can use any block data to generate any art, um, how they see fit, right? Yeah. It's up to the creator to come to be creative here. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and ultimately the min inscription is just a JSON with a block height. That's ultimately what I'm trying to say It's very simple. Yeah. Right. And then all this stuff just kind of points back to each other. And this is all by design, like from the drop, because yeah. we knew this was possible. We just, yeah. we needed kind of like infrastructure support to make this a reality. You're correct. So, yeah. So hopefully, um, that makes some sense. If, uh, you guys have any questions, let us know in the comment section below. Join our discord. That's where all this like stuff happens. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then if you're ready to launch your art and you're trying to get this, like trying to understand how to deploy this on chain and all that stuff, definitely hit us up. We'll walk you through it just like, um, you know, like we figured out here and, um, and that's it. Yeah. So, uh, appreciate you guys for watching and we will catch you in the next video. Peace.